we've hinted around a little bit in chapter 12 about transfer of heat, but how do you actually transfer it from one body to another? That's the subject of this chapter. Lots of applications. Convection. I don't know why we hit that one first. It's perhaps the most, uh, most complicated of the three. But um, it's not that complicated. Actually, we're not going to do a whole lot in convection. I've spent large portions of my research life studying convection um, in liquid helium-3, helium-4 mixtures for my PhD at Stanford in autocatalytic reactions at uh, West Virginia University in nanofluidics and a microfluidic situation um, in here at Utah State and at West Virginia. So uh, an interesting topic. Convection is a process by which heat is carried from one place to another by the bulk movement of a fluid. What happens here? This is called buoyancy-driven convection. Um, the, it was first described by a fellow named Lord Rayleigh, who at the turn of the century, 1906 or thereabouts, he was a dairy farmer. He was interested in, um, in science. He, uh, he explained why the sky is blue, because light scatters more heavily, the blue light scatters more heavily than, than red light. He also described uh, convection. That's the way science was done in the old days. Nobody got paid to do it. People did it out of sheer love. So, but he described this motion. Uh, what happens here? When you put a pan on the water, uh, a pan of water on the stove, you heat it up, and so the temperature here, if the temperature at the, at the top is T0, then the temperature at the bottom is going to be higher. So this is hot. This is cold. We already know about thermal expansion. Thermal expansion says that when you heat something up, it uh, its volume increases. Its density decreases. So we have a low density down here and a high density. Well, gravity doesn't like that. It doesn't like heavy things on top of light things. And so what happens is that the heavy stuff comes down, the, the cold, heavy fluid comes down, and the light, hot fluid comes up. So that uh, creates these uh, so-called convection cells or convection rolls. The hot fluid is rising. It cools off when it makes contact with the surface. It cools down and comes down again. That's convection, buoyancy-driven convection. And it's driven by the fact that, that water, like air, expands when it is uh, heated. Uh, a little demonstration of buoyancy-driven convection. This is a demonstration of convection. I have a, a, a tube that has a, a circular cross-section, and it's shaped in the, in the shape of a, of a rectangle. I'm, uh, it's filled with water. I fill it from the top here. I'm going to heat the corner of this rectangle here with this burner and add a little bit of dye so you can see the motion of the, the water during the convection. This is buoyancy driven convection. Why? Because here in this corner the water is going to be hot. It'll expand just like air expands, water expands when it's hot. And once it expands it's going to want to try and rise. So the water will, will rise along here, but, but you can't just uh, have this water rise without water coming in to take its place. So we'll get a, a circular convection pattern. That's the hope anyway.
So we're beginning to see some motion of the red dye down along this side. Reminds me of a movie I saw in the 70s called The Green Blob that was penetrating all the streets, killing the people. This is the red blob. So most of the dye has made it down around to this corner and it's heading on its way up. This is the, the type of motion that occurs when you heat water uh, on your pan. It's heated from below. The water near the bottom of the pan is closest to the burner, gets the hottest, expands, rises to the top, cools when it makes contact with the top, and then sinks down again to replace the, the water that's just been heated at the bottom. So that's convection, that's motion of, of, uh, of a fluid in response to heating. I think it's kind of pretty. So that's convection. Okay, a conceptual example. Hot water baseboard heating units are mounted on the wall next to the floor. Why? We can understand it now in terms of this uh, convection that we've been able to understand. Here's the baseboard unit. It's mounted along the wall near the floor. What's its function in life? It's a heating unit. So it's going to heat the air in this vicinity. Well, what's that air going to do? Hot air expands and rises. So we'll get a nice motion along the wall of that hot, heated air. It goes along the ceiling uh, as it is m moving through the room and mixing with other parts, it's cooling down, and then um, comes down around the other side. You can't go up unless you come down. <laughs> Otherwise, all the water is going to be, all the air is going to be in one place in the room. It won't make any sense. Uh, comes back down, gets colder and colder, and then and, and gets sucked along the floor, pulled along the floor um, to replace the, the hot air that's rising, and then it gets heated and the cycle repeats itself. Um, so, what about the cooling units on a fridge? Well, you want, you, and here would be the problem. If we were to put this heating unit up here, then what would happen? It'd be embarrassing. You'd heat up this air up here, it wouldn't have any place to rise to. You wouldn't, you wouldn't drive any convection. It would just have a, there'd be a hot air region up here unless you open the door or something, put a fan on. You're not gonna get circulation, which is what you want to, uh, for your house. On the other hand, putting a cooling unit up near the ceiling does make sense. Why? You cool that air, it, uh, instead of expanding, it contracts and wants to fall down because it's uh, higher density now. It's contracted and uh, its volume is decreased and its density is increased. So it falls and that's why that cooling unit needs to be up near the, near the, near the uh, top of the refrigerator. Uh, thermals, we've uh, my son and I have built uh, gliders. We kept it up one time. My son kept it up for four minutes in a thermal. It was beautiful. I think it was actually, it was, I think it was 12 minutes, actually. Um, that's where we got warmer ground, cooler ground surrounding. The warmer ground heats up the air. The hot air rises, and you can keep a glider moving that way. Plumes of smoke. Why do they rise? Why don't they just stay down near the earth? Well, it's hot. Um, uh, and there's a fire, it creates smoke, that hot air is hot, it rises into the sky because of this um, hot air rises convection. Forced convection. So this is where, uh, the examples that we've talked about so far, these are called natural convection, where there's no fan that's needed to circulate this, this air, warm air, in this case, cold air in this case. It's just, it occurs naturally by the natural expansion uh, or contraction of the air. Forced convection is a different beast. 
in your engine, water is circulated throughout the engine block, gets hot as it passes through the engine block, absorbing some of the energy from the, the combustion in your, in your engine. Gets hot and it gets driven. There's a pump, uh, a water pump, which I once had to re replace in my car years ago. I think it was a Mercury Capri at the time, just so you know. And that water pump pumps the water through the radiator and cools it uh, by the action of, of wind from as you're driving the car, goes around the pipes containing the hot water and cools down the pipes and the water. And then you, uh, so that's called forced convection, where you actually got some kind of a pump or something driving it. Um, central air systems, most of, our, most of our homes have a central air heating system, transfers energy by forced convection. You've got a fan pushing it through the pipes. Then there's some natural convection that occurs inside of the room, though. Once it's in the room, the, the, this hot air is forced into the room. Well, it's going to be hot and it's going to rise. And so you're hoping for some natural convection to um, supplement the forced convection. An overheated athlete uses a rapid thermal exchange device to cool down. Um, Forced convection circulates this cooled water through a plate, which cools the blood flowing through his hand. So here's his plate, the, this plate that is cold, and it's going to cool his hand down. And the cool blood returns through his veins to the heart, which circulates it through. I've never seen one of these before. But it was a cool little demo or a little um, application in, in your textbook. Under which of the following circumstances will heat transfer via convection? Convection occurs within metal objects. So the answer to that is no. As it turns out, this will be um, conduction, heat by con uh, transfer by con conduction. Convection only occurs in non-metallic solids. It doesn't occur in, in solids at all. Convection only occurs in liquids and gases. You have to have some motion of the, of the fluid. And convection occurs only within a vacuum. Well, that's not true either. You've got to have some air to, or, or liquid or water. Convection occurs in the motion of a liquid or gas. So that's the one. Occur whether matter is present or not. Nope. 